everybody. Welcome to the Jcast Experience. I'm Jay Wade. I'm and good. shit, dude. Sorry, I forgot what I got to watch in the fucking game, dude. I thought you saw this for me. My bad. No, no, well, I was watching the game, dude, and I just I don't know. Well, there we go, everybody. We're watching the the game six of the World Series, and that is Drew. <laughs> I'm Drew. Yeah. <laughs> I got excited watching the game on pause. Something happened. But anyway, uh, we're both baseball fans and uh, Chicago fan Drew is. That's we right. uh, we figured we would do something here with baseball. I normally like to do political, social, commentary, crap like that. Things that matter and, and affect everybody. But hey, this matters it. and is affecting us right now. Yes, yes. Well, I'm, I'm, I want to be selfish and talk about something that I love and I enjoy and it affects me. <laughs> and great. baseball is it, dude. I cry over baseball sometimes. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, especially when you're invested into your team. And, yeah. Well, for me, it, it, it goes a little bit beyond that. It's the, it's the emotional relationship part. And I was oh, thinking yeah. about this in bed last night. Um, and, and, and this is what I, and I, I maybe even said it out loud a little bit, but any grown man who doesn't cry at the end of Field of Dreams when he says, hey, Dad, you want to have a catch, is not a human being, dude. Well, yeah. Soulless beast. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, because there's times where you're talking to dudes, and it's like, dude, I'll tell you what, that movie, that movie got me. Yeah. And they're like, you pansy. Yeah. You know, like, I don't cry during movies and stuff. Well, that means you just... You're not, you know, you're not watching it correctly, if you ask me. You know, it's like reading a book and not visualizing it in your head while you're reading it. Yeah. It's, it's like you just, well, you didn't get the story. You don't yeah. understand what's going on then. Because, like, the dude wants to have a catch with his dad. His, his dad's dead. Yeah. You know, like, oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> From 20 years ago. Spoiler. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly, you know. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't? I just seen a post the other day from my buddy Jay on Facebook that said that he'd give anything he owns just to get a phone call from his dad. You know, yeah. he, was, he, he was passed on, and uh, and and uh, of course, I'm fortunate to still have my father, but I get that. Yeah, you know, there's people that I've lost, you know, that I'd love to get a phone call from. It'd be I'd give anything and everything. I am. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and and if you don't get that in movies and 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 of course there are movies that aren't written very well yeah. and they they get to emotional parts and it's like is this a joke yeah. you know but no I get it with with baseball you know I I feel the same like watching basketball I was really invested in basketball when I was a kid but uh as you know yeah but uh oh yeah but you know when you put part of your life into it. And, and you really care about it, man. It, especially the ups and downs, and the, if you're really paying attention, these guys, this is their life. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. And it's hard to lose. It's always hard to lose. Yeah. Yeah. You get invested in them like, uh, like, like some folks would in soap opera characters. And, oh yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, it's I'm like you're in that the as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was stay at home dad for four years, people, so. Don't don't you know? Don't judge me. I watch soap operas. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But just Young and the Restless. That's the only one I really. Hey watch. man, I used to watch that with my mom when I was yeah. a little kid, like and, uh, five years old or something like and that. And I will say, the the Chancellor, if anybody knows who I'm talking about, she died, and that's like your grandma dying. She died. Yeah, I like, did uh, not know that. Yeah, and, and that you know because I watched it when I was a kid with my mom and everything, and uh, and she is always you know. This super awesome lady that was cutthroat at the yeah. same time, you know, and in uh, the richest person on the show. Even. Oh my god! Yeah, but uh, but she died, and it's you know that you can't plan for that in the yeah. in a show like that where you film every single day. But uh, but they wrote it in there real nice, and it was it was emotional, man. It was yeah. emotional. I will say it, it's like damn that that person. I it feels like you know. Her. You know, even though she's playing a character, and you maybe don't she really knows know. Kevin Costner's dad from Field of Dreams. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, like I said, we're sitting here with the game on, and uh, and and well, you would ask me before we start recording, and I'll go ahead and, and answer your question. You'd ask me, well, go ahead and ask me again because I can't remember. Right. Exactly. Well, I wanted to know uh, how you came upon your favorite baseball team. 
Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, my parents had moved our family to, to Texas when I was a little kid. And so I learned how to talk there. I learned how to walk there. I learned everything there. Sure. And so I was a Houston Astros fan as a kid because I was raised in North Houston. And it was freaking sweet, dude. It was the Astro Dome when they had that. And it yeah. was when they had all the big scoreboards and had the bowls and stuff yeah. on them, you know. And, uh, I mean, I loved baseball. I was a kid, you know. And – then we moved up here to Ohio, and I started going out and spending time in the summers with my dad and my grandpa sitting in my grandpa's garage. He turned it into a, I don't know what the, the what do they call it, a summer kitchen or something? Yeah, I can't I remember, kind, something kind of like that, a, but. I think that's the term. Yeah. He, like, had the had a screen uh, on the garage, where the garage where it was, would lift up the door and just sit yeah. out there with his TV and chairs and stuff yeah. in the summer and spring and fall. I want one of those for my doors. That would be cool. Yeah, Damn, that's nice. And, uh, well, every summer before we moved back up here, I would come up here, me and my brothers would. So we would hang out, and and we yeah. would, I would listen to the games with, with my grandpa. And I remember hearing Marty and, uh, oh, Joe. Joe. I'm so, I feel Joe. like, an, oh, I feel so bad. Uh, <laughs> Nazi, man. Oh, but, that's uh, all that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, what did I say? Yeah, Marty and Joe. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and so then, but it, it became just sitting there with my dad and my grandpa watching the games on TV on mute or volume down and listen to Marty and Joe call them. And that's, that's why I chose the Reds. That's why I yeah. became a Reds fan. So. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Not to mention, you know. Very respectable team, the yeah. oldest team in baseball. Oh yeah, but uh, but being from Dayton for myself, and then loving the Cubs instead of the Reds. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> you have some big balls you did as a kid. Too. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but I really loved Ryan Sandberg. Like he was a man. You know, and I've always, that's how I've always picked all my teams. I, it was some player that I just loved the most as a child and uh, just loved that team because of it. And luckily, all those players stayed with the team until right. the end of their careers. And, but, uh, but yeah, that's, I mean, not to mention, I love the underdog, too. Like that, yeah, that's always know, good. Everyone loves that underdog. Right. But, but watching them come into the World Series for me is... This is unreal. And it's history. <laughs> yeah, and, this is history. Right I mean, now. it's been this has been seventy one years since they even been in the series. We got your pitcher out on the mound now. Y'all, oh, Chapman. Yeah. Damn you, Reds, for letting him go. Uh, Reds, I y'all never mind. I'm not gonna be the backseat <laughs> manager or the backseat owner. But I will say, I do want to say that I listen to Seven Hundred a lot, and I love the sports talk and all that. Right. Yeah. And. There's a lot of, for the Reds, there's a lot of blame being thrown at uh, Brian Knight. Mm -hmm. Is it Knight? Knight. Yes, Brian Knight. I'm sorry, guys, but y'all just, you peed me off, man. And I'm having a hard time following you the last two or three years because I just, <laughs> you got to make some real changes. But people want to blame the manager, no matter who it is, the general manager, no matter who it is, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, but exactly. the bottom line is it's the owner's fault. Because the owner is in charge of who is the general manager and, and yeah. who is the, the and owner's in charge. Whether he just lets him, whether he agrees and says, yeah, I like that idea, or whether it's it's like I'm not involved with right. the team enough. Like, either way, it's his fault. Yeah. You know, and, oh, yeah. And that, or her fault for that matter. Yeah. But uh, because, you know, Mark Shot, we had a woman owner for quite some time. Yeah, and she but, brought us a freaking championship. Yeah. My question is, is what happened to, like, say, three years ago when you guys went to the playoffs and stuff? Yeah. Like, why didn't they just Drop build with right that team? Like, was it just too much salary being yeah, paid I, out? Or? Uh, yeah, I don't get it, man. They, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand what their logic I mean, is they their finances, dude. They had a, I mean, of course, they always do great before the All-Star game. It seems. <clears throat> yeah. But, uh, but afterward, they usually. But, uh, but yeah, they're, it's hard because I like the Reds, too, even though they're in our division. 
you know, the Reds is my second favorite team. Oh, yeah. And then, again, we're sitting here watching the, the World Series, and then we got the Cleveland yeah, Indians, who who also, they're my third favorite team. Now my first right. favorite team is playing my third favorite team. And uh, it's it's and What's hard. it been, 48 years? Or, or was 50, it 1948? I thought it was 50, 51 years for the Indians. And then, A long time. Yeah. That's what I love about this World Series, so like, dude. Oh, wait, no matter who wins, first, yeah. it's going to be so awesome for that team, the city. Oh, it's yeah. just going to be so awesome, no matter who. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for the Cubbies, man. I'm well, rooting for the I'm Cubbies. All I'm saying is, that Cleveland already had their championship this year. Let's spread the wealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they ain't going to be getting one for football anytime soon. Um, not unless they fire everyone, <laughs> and then hire like the Patriots whole team. Right. Oh, man. And everything. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm not a big Patriots fan, they just seem to have a good organization going. Yeah. Or yeah, cheating. I, good at cheating. Yeah. I don't know. Very good at cheating. Yeah. Man. <laughs> but, yeah, r right now the game's in uh, – what, what do we – let's do some stats. What do we uh, – Chicago's up 7-2. to two. It's the bottom of the eighth. One runner on first. One out. Cleveland's up to bat. Yeah. And uh, Chapman, man, I would not want to go up against his left arm, dude. No way. I wouldn't want to go up against his right arm either. But Watching him throw in slow motion. I mean, you know, you see a lot of pitchers throw in slow motion, but his arm is like a literal like slingshot. It really like, is. It bends so awkwardly. Broken back. Oh, got him. Double, double, double two, double, two, double, two, two. There yes. it is. Double play. Nice. Finish out the eighth, going into the ninth. That's what I'm Well, on our about. way to freaking game seven, dude. Yeah, to, tomorrow night's going to be awesome. I am not going to do anything whatsoever. Although I am going to be burning a cat. And I can't believe I just said that on the show. But <laughs> <laughs> I sound like a monster now. Oh, my God. No, my buddy's kitten got, got a really crazy disease. It's like the cat oh. equivalent to AIDS or something. And... Oh, wow. It passed away, and he built a coffin for it and was going to bury it, but he lives he lives within limits and not allowed to bury a corpse in the limits, and sure. he just doesn't want to, yeah. you know. And well, so cremation he's just going to bring it out. Well, I told him last week, joking around, I said, bring it out, dude. We'll have a freaking Darth Vader fire. <laughs> yeah, build up a cool-looking thing to set the box on and burn. Yeah. But anyway... Yeah. But tomorrow night, yeah, got to do that. But I will have the radio out there for sure. But anyway, oh, yeah. we're on a commercial break now. Let's get into uh, let's get into to something that just irks me: stats and Hall of Fame stuff like that. Because you know we you know, know that, Pete Rose. Well, not just Pete Rose, but let, yeah, let's start with Pete Rose, okay. man. Okay. And go right ahead because okay, I gotta collect I myself. I can tell that's already by your voice you're you're a little irritated. Dude. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm I'm very irritated about oh, yeah. myself because here's the thing. Yeah, he was in baseball and better on baseball. He admitted that. Okay. Which Took is, him a long which time. Which is more than most freaking steroid people have oh, ever yeah. done is admit at least in the wrong. But anyway. He was betting on his own team. Exactly. Okay. He he doesn't like to lose. He's going to bet that he's winning. Mm -hmm. And it's probably Which he did and the thing is, is, is he's probably just doing it as a thing to just have some fun because it's not like right. he needed the dang money either. No, no, no. I mean, and, and then the problem of it is, in my eyes, this is why he's not in the Hall of Fame is because he's a stubborn asshole too. Oh, sorry. Excuse my It's language. all right. Excuse my language. But, uh, but just, just like commissioners and everybody else that's turned him down this whole time, he, he is just as stubborn. They don't like him because of that. But but he is baseball. Like yes. to me, like like he is the Michael Jordan of baseball because he made it popular again. Even mm -hmm. though it's been popular forever beforehand, he reinvented it. You know, sliding head first in the first base. Yeah. You know, I mean and not to mention he could he batted both ways, you know, and he was he was he yeah, played, he had a lot of power right handed, but he was feared left handed. Yeah. You know, and he, and he played was a right position on the know. field. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. One time he did pitch. Well, I can't remember any details, but I do remember one yeah. time he did pitch. I'd have to assume that they Play got down their last position. pitcher. He got injured, and they had to go with the next best option. You know, because that's what happens with like kickers and stuff like that, especially at high school level. Mm, right. But uh, I'd have to assume there's a scenario along those lines. Or they were beating the crap out of someone, and he's like, throw me in there as pitcher. You know, and he'd been right. doing it at practice, and they knew he could throw some beat. Right. Yeah. Or it was when he was manager and he was just like, give me the ball and get the hell out of here. Yeah, I'm exactly. I can throw better than this. Let me show you. Yeah. Which I always I always found fascinating, the concept of having a player manager. But the fact that it actually worked. It's hard. It, it, and I've seen it even in like basketball, for instance. You know, Michael Jordan was a player manager, and he did okay. He did do Jordan-esque, right. you know, but he did okay. But then you've had other players that tried the same thing, and it was it was terrible. You know, I mean, they'd go in there and fill a slot, but that was it. Yeah. They're probably better yeah. than the best college person, maybe. You know. <laughs> but that doesn't mean anything in pros. Yeah. Well, yeah, in... in when you said, you know, Pete bet on his own team, dude, that means he played harder. He, he didn't want yeah, to lose he wanted to win that game. game. He wanted you to know? win that game. <laughs> and, and, hit, and, and then to kind of segue into the juicing asshole, sorry, for, um, I'm apologizing no, on my I, own show. I totally agree. They're running um, baseball. Oh, and all oh no, really. he's got that. That's yeah. an out. That's all right, though. Seven to two, top nine could go. Yep. Two outs. And, uh, but he his stats were legit. They were legit stats, dude. He did not cheat. He did not juice. Nothing like nothing. that, dude. But no, for for some reason we got Bonds and McGuire, are yeah. are what runs. first and second or some crap in the home run all time home runs. Yeah. Over Babe Ruth, who who was a fat slob, and not, and not, I don't say fat in a bad way, but the man was a fat slob. He was. He was an alcoholic and he ate a bunch of crap. <laughs> Which is fine, but that's my point, is that he did that, and he was still badass. Dude. Yeah, exactly. He's drunk out there probably half the time. Probably. Still crazy. And he ball. played a couple positions. Outfield oh, pitcher. First base. He's a, he was an awesome first baseman. Man. Yeah. He just, oh. And, and you got these ass clowns up there. Now, sorry, I'm getting on to it now, man. Who, <laughs> who cheat? Like you said, A Rod. Oh, nice hit. I've got a jersey upstairs right now. Sosa. So yeah, Sosa. <laughs> it's just Which is sad because he was dude. the nicest guy. And then he come come out, you know, and he was he was juicing as well. And it's like Well smart. before that even he got busted with the cork back. Yeah, exactly. It's just in these guys, they're they are grown men making hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. To play a game at freaking recess every day, pretty much, is what it yeah. is. And it's that way with every sport. I will say, But though, baseball, come on, dude. Oh, oh, yeah, exactly. I will say about the cork bat is better than juicing, at least. Yes, cork it is. Cork bat's like a spitball or, a, you know, having grease in your hair. Right. And sticking it. You know, they've been doing tricks like that forever. But, I mean, cork bat, that's dirty. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to say that I would ever say yes to cork bat myself. Yeah. Because I wouldn't. But uh, juicing was as bad as it gets. That's that'll ruin the game. Cork bat. That's happened throughout history. Mm -hmm. You know, juicing is it's terrible. Oh, oh, oh my! That was a that is out of here, dude. Woo! Cubby's two that's run like, home run. Top Rizzo, of the ninth. Rizzo, third home run this postseason. Man, that is that is something. And, and there's another thing I love Some about baseball. Some people got three hits in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I love about baseball is the crack of that bat, dude. Mm. And not every time, but ones like that, as soon as you hear that crack, I you bet know you it's see it gone. In the video. I bet you can I, see yeah. it in the video. Like our attention's like, what? Yep. It's just but, like everything stops, dude. But his swing was very Ken Griffey Jr. like. Did you see that follow through? Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. Not yep. to mention he's left handed, too. True. So it all. <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, that's something. There's another guy right there. Ken Griffey Jr. deserves more credit than what he ever got because he was during the juicing era. Yeah, you know that guy. He was amazing. 
But because these juicers are out there knocking all these balls out, he was nothing in comparison toward the end of his career, which is which is bull. Yeah. I mean, I don't like the fact that he, he was constantly jumping around teams and stuff like that. Wasn't really that's not my style. Right. Right. But uh. I could see wanting to come to the Reds because that's his hometown, you know what I mean? His dad. Yeah, his dad. Big red machine. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, but man, he had such a good thing going with the Mariners. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, you could retire there and live like a king. Even and then if he went back, back, you know, yeah. after he was here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, I want to take a minute to say something about King Griffey Jr. and to him personally. He'll never <laughs> hear this, but... I I I have I've wanted to write him a letter for years, dude, because I owe I owe him a huge apology. Yeah. Um. When he first came to Cincinnati, I may have told you I'm not sure. When he first came to Cincy, me and my buddies would go to games. We got tickets through my dad's company that he owned, the Concrete Company. They were 13 rows up yeah. from home plate. It's Energy Field, so it was close. Yeah. It was like. Griffey Jr.'s second or third game that he was here, and he he didn't get off to a good start, if you remember. Yeah. Man, I heckled him the whole game, and I I really do feel really bad about it, dude. I mean, I I and I mean I was brutal, dude. I was really extremely brutal. I was a complete asshole, and. I have wanted to write him a letter for years about that to apologize, dude, because I, I was yeah. young and stupid, and well, you it was really extremely rude. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I still feel bad about it. I mean, we're talking like, what, 13, 14, 15 years later? Dude, I yeah. still feel bad about that. That's how you mean you should, because he's a person. Yeah. You know, and, and you don't know him personally. No. But at the same time, he is a professional, and hecklers is part of it. Yeah, you know this isn't golf, where it's like, oh, this guy's heckling me too much, get him out of here. Yeah, no, you know, right. no. This is this is baseball. The crowd can say anything at any time, and and they should be able to block it out completely. You know, but again, he's a person, Wade, and you should probably write him a letter. Yeah, <laughs> I really should, man. And I have thought about it a lot over yeah. the years. I mean, did I, even in low level. Basketball, when some you when you hear somebody saying something to you, it makes you want to, you know, just walk yeah. off the court and punch them in the face. Yeah, I'll tell you that. But you just swallow it down and keep moving and don't focus on it. You know, and I'm sure being a professional, obviously, he's real good at that, especially being an outfielder. Oh yeah, outfielders yeah. get, the, get the, <laughs> the most of it, dude. Yeah, I mean that's uh, I've I've heard people yelling stuff at outfielders that make me blush. Yeah, like, I, I'm a dirty sailor half the time, you know, like, like that's terrible bad, but some people, uh, you know, of course there's alcohol involved too, half yeah. the time. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> One, two, three beers are broke at the old ball game. Oh, yeah. Um, $11, 16 ounce beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chicago is in the World Series, but there are two teams from Chicago. Yes. There's also the Black Sox. Or, well, right. Right. the Black Sox, who I'm going to talk about, the White Sox. Yeah. But the 1918 Black Sox, yeah. as they were dubbed, yeah. uh, for the whole cheating scandal, the exactly. throwing the games, and they played the Cincinnati Redlegs. Yep. And um, I, I also want to say something for the record, that they're based on the stats and how well he played. Although Joe Jackson took money... He did not throw those games. He did not cheat. He did not let yeah. up. He took the money, but he did not freaking try to throw those games, man. No, I, he was I one of the, the he could have been the MVP in. for both teams, dude. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> for real, he yeah. kicked ass, dude. Yeah, he was awesome. She was Jerry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah, that's a. Uh, Dad, it's. Want to have a catch? <laughs> okay, but no, uh, no, I agree. I agree, and that's been the argument. Like when you watch documentaries and stuff on it, the argument it is, you know, that I forget the other, what is it, three other guys that took the money as well. Oh, there eight. were there were uh, there were eight total. Eight total. Wow. Because I'm I'm about to watch the movie Eight Men Out. Oh, yeah, I get that's home, right. actually. That's right. But yeah, there there were eight total because the pitcher. 
they couldn't buy the pitcher because they'd have to buy every pitcher because that's the only yeah. position that rotated. Exactly. But uh, everybody says that Joe Jackson didn't, he didn't cheat. Even the other guys said it. Yeah. Like there's no way he didn't he yeah. didn't have an error even yeah. or anything like that. You know, no overthrows, no nothing. Yeah. And uh, and and I believe he batted very well for it too. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, that's. It's sad because he took the money. Yeah. If he didn't take the money, it would have been a different story. Oh, yeah. You know, but again, if he didn't take the money, he probably would have ratted out everybody else. And, <laughs> and it would have been a whole different story anyway. But Do you think that the that baseball should reopen him specifically, his case, and look at the stats, look at everything? I mean, even though he did take money, he didn't. You, it's obvious that he didn't cheat, but then again, it comes yeah. back to the the Pete Rose thing where he didn't cheat, but his he his was money game yeah. involved, and it just. My thing is, is this: is Tom Brady going to be in the Hall of Fame? Not the baseball Hall of Fame. No, no, but <laughs> I'm just the Hall of Fame. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he's going to be in yeah, the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he is. And he just sat out four games for cheat. Yeah. You know, and he cheated in the game. Like, you know, I, I don't understand. I don't know. He didn't. Pete Rose didn't even cheat. Yeah. Like, there was, there was nothing. There was nothing he did to throw the game whatsoever or even bet toward he would have had to throw the game to get the money. Like, I don't get any of it. I don't nah, get it at all. Either, man. And in all reality, like, the other day I was telling you about watching Pete Rose give a batting lesson on – whatever sports shows on Facebook, what I've seen there's a clip. And mm. Frank Thomas was there and A-Rod was there. And they do a show, I guess. But anyway, uh, you know, they were asking Pete Rose questions. And and, uh, and A-Rod just looked on his face like he just kept pushing the conversation along, totally uninterested. And and, and then Frank Thomas, on the other hand, is looking at Pete Rose like, like this is my this is my hero talking to me right now about how to hit a ball, you know, and, and it's Frank Thomas. And he's, like, totally grabbing on to every word that right, he's right. saying. You know, like, he's going to he's gonna make the big leagues next year with this swing technique that Pete's teaching him right now. Like, it, it's ridiculous. And, and But Pete's saying some awesome stuff about, like, the batter's box and how he could change the way the pitcher was or the timing with the pitch by where he was standing in the box. Right, right. You know, and uh, – and and he knew where he needed to stand for different pitchers, and then, you know, they're asking him questions like, you know, which way were you more strong of a batter? And he's like, well, you know, every every person that say you're right-handed, that's your strong hand. That's where you're going to hit most of your home runs. Right. You know, he's like, but out of my 4,200, he's like, 3,000 of them were left-handed. He's like, I was a lot more consistent left-handed. Yeah. Not to mention back then, you know, you didn't have switch pitchers even or, right. or that many lefties or anything like that. So he's constantly being able to, to go to the left for a right handed pitcher and change the pitch altogether. You know. But uh but A Rod's standing there like totally, totally uninterested, which was pissing me off. Like dude, you should you should sit there and bow down to him because guess what, but he didn't cheat like you cheated. Yeah. You know, and he wasn't a big pansy. Yeah, you're lucky you, you got a job, dude. Yeah. Shut up. And you're lucky to up. have a quarter of the passion that man had while he played. Yeah. You know, I, I probably would have hated to be on Pete Rose's team half the time because if you lost, I'll bet he was just an a hole. Oh, yeah. Back yeah. in that locker room afterwards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there were, <clears throat> excuse me, there were stories of, uh, he and Dibble, I think it was, would got to a brawl at least once. Yeah. Just, well, I can see that. Rob Dibble is a hothead. Yeah, he, threw, yeah. he threw a ball and a person in the stand. Yeah, man. from the <laughs> mound <laughs> and over the outfield wall and hit an old lady in the face. Yeah. I mean, sorry, old lady, but nice throw, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. Jeez. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a ridiculous throw. Man. But, yeah, that's a... Uh, I, I don't really get it, and I really think that uh, once commissioners change again, it'll have. I think it'll really take Pete Rose to die. Yeah. Like once once he dies, like literally the day after, he'll be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> you can probably quote me on that and make it a prediction. 
Just yeah. etch that in the stone, my friends, because because they don't want to give them the satisfaction. That's how it seems. Right. It seems yeah. like it's just yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. <laughs> well, something I like watching more than regular or not regular, but Major League Baseball is. You know, I love watching the World League or the Little League World Series. Oh yeah. Now that is where it's at, dude. It's exciting. It's fun. Now talk about getting emotionally invested. But in that, it's not like it, the emotions are just like it's like your joy and happiness. Like you're sitting on the bench with the kids, a part of the team. You just don't play. Yeah. But you're like in it in that in that way. You're just yeah. And I I still love the sound of the metal bats on a ball. That is yeah. so cool, dude. <laughs> yeah, that is that is awesome. No, uh, that's uh, I'm surprised they still let them use metal bats. Why wouldn't they though? Because they come off the bat harder. Oh, well, they do. Yeah, because the bat actually flexes in. Mm -hmm. If you were watching in slow motion, it makes a small bent to bat, and then it pops out and flings it. No, oh, no. And, yeah, that. and it comes off harder, which can obviously lead to much worse injuries, especially for pitchers. Right, right. Yeah. You know, but uh, but yeah, that's uh. Oh. Wow, that was. Oh, uh, is he did he get it? In? No, he. Oh, oh right. my! That's where your own stadium yep. puts it to you. <laughs> Chicago's up nine side. to two, bottom of the ninth. Indians got a runner on first with one out. Um, what's your favorite baseball movie and why? And it can't be Field of Dreams. No, it's not. And mine is, Which even uh, if it was, just act like it wasn't. But see, I have a, I have nostalgic ones because I was a kid and they were kid movies, you know. But like like Rookie of the Year, for instance. Right, like right. That. But that's not it either. It's uh, I'm trying to think of a name is what it is, and I know it. I've seen it a billion times, but it's driving me nuts right now. Tom Hanks, you know. Uh, oh, uh, League of Their Own. League of Their Own is based my, on a true story. Even my hands down, even over Field of Dreams. Mm. Hands down, favorite baseball show or movie of all time, and and really, I think that's what started my love even with Tom Hanks. Like, really? Yeah. Like, oh man, that was a great movie. Than, I don't know. Big was probably really. Yeah. Big. But uh, but anyway, uh, the fact that it ties into war and it really kind of yeah. shows it shows what they were going through, and and really, I mean, they had real. Real women at the end that mm -hmm. were actually played for the team. You have to assume that they followed the storyline yeah. pretty close to what actually happened. Yeah, and uh, and it was a lot. You know, a lot happened. Like what really hits home is you're enjoying this film the whole time, and then toward the end, they they deliver a, a message yeah. saying that you know one of their husbands was killed. Yeah, the they're in the locker duty. room, like just about to go take the field. Yeah, in and, reality hits, and 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 that's like. For me, it, the movie totally changed, and and it changed the whole rest of the movie beforehand, because that is life. Like I was thinking about that earlier. Like you could just be like we are right now, and then something was to happen and you die. Yeah. You know, and and that's how they are. They're living in the moment until it's like, hey, don't forget about real life right now. Yeah. You know, you could die at any moment or something. No, don't forget about why you are in. This position, yeah, exactly. Hell, you know? Exactly, and and uh, yeah, that's. I mean, if you can't if you can't feel emotion over something like that, then oh, then man. again, you're not watching the movie. Right in the corner, nine to three. Oh, is he out? He's out. He got him. Yep. Nice, nice throw, nice hit, nice score, and nice throw. Yeah, sometimes you got to sacrifice a score to get to the next out. You know. Yeah. Uh, dude, I'm a huge fan of Sacrifice, dude. Mm -hmm. Are they going to put that other out up? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like, what's going on with that? Yeah, that was a great hit right in the corner, man. Boy, it was about six inches from out of bounds. One yeah. The wall, bouncing to the wall. Yeah, dude, my favorite movie, a uh, baseball movie, is The Natural. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing that when I was a little kid. And, of course, being, being little, the parts that got me were, you know, when he broke the clock or broke the window, and then at the end when he broke out the lights, and it was like the fireworks, and he's running in the dark, and, oh, you yeah. know. But uh, as I got older, I was like, well, 
I'm just gonna watch it and really watch it, you know. And that is that's my favorite baseball movie. I own it today. I yeah. I love that movie, dude. Robert Redford, freaking Robert Duvall. I mean, you can't go wrong. Wilford Brimley is the manager. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I mean, Robert Duvall is yeah, he's anything he's in. I mean, Robert Redford, obviously, too, but Robert Duvall's oh, yeah. ridiculously good. But uh, can, we, can we talk about Carlos Santana, the guitarist, baseball player? Oh, I know. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. <laughs> I'm waiting on the new album, but I guess he's got to finish playing the game first. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, was that a walk? Yep, he walked him. Why did they take Chapman out? Just so he didn't overthrow himself for for tomorrow? Or? I'm not sure. We were talking, and <laughs> I lost track of what was happening there. I mean, I mean, come on, this guy here, he's hes trying to give it away right now. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go ahead and do a pitcher change, yep. It might just be... No, no, you're right. Yep. Wow. Now, what do you think about the New York Yankees, because a lot of people hate the Yankees. And I'm not talking, like, the quality of their teams, because you can't deny they have, they've had good teams for years. They've been able to pull awesome players. But what, do you, what are your feelings on the way they acquire their teams and stuff like that? Because, I mean, a lot of people don't like that they buy their teams. They buy their championships. Well, my thing is, is I don't like it either because it really started a thing throughout all sports. And now you got these super teams, and it's like, why don't you just give them the damn title then? Right. You know, but on the other hand, every team has that op same opportunity. They can throw out that money, too. You know? Well, well but, not the same amount. Well, you know what I mean? Some, some owners are... Is there isn't a cap? Is there not in baseball? But I mean, in other sports. Well, right? but but in baseball, there's no cap, so not no. you know, they need to make a cap that suit that is suitable to the the lowest income team. You know, the oh, least. Yeah. Otherwise, it will never work because the Reds are always going to have a higher, uh, more money to pay than someone else, and then the Yankees are always going to have more money than everybody. Yeah, exactly. So they need to put a cap based on the lowest, like the lowest team. Maybe not this, right at what they can spend, but a little above that. So Give them tough. a chance and make that the cap. It's so tough because there's so many people now in professional sports, especially baseball. But you would think that even though you don't have all the money the Yankees have, that you'd be able to put together a team just as good. Right, right. You know, but not every team can be able to do that, I guess. So you're right. There should probably be a cap of some sort. Yeah. I mean, at least make it to where it's like if you're not bringing in enough like ticket sales and, and merchandise sales and stuff like that, well, then that's your problem. Yeah. You know, type yeah. of deal. Because you can't just be like, oh, well, the cap's got to be, you know, 90 million, and and that's super low. Right. You know. Yeah, like, it's, you, it's, you not, it's not, it's not, it's not, you can't, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Because I can't explain what I'm thinking, but I'm thinking of the fan base and how, if they're not buying the merchandise and stuff, that's not any other team's fault. Well, you know, it's, that's, it's their marketing, and it's, yeah. their, it's their choice to, to not pull in better players to yeah. bring butts in the seats. Well, the pulling you know, in better players has a lot to do with the salary. Yeah, exactly. Though. But you also have to be able to market, and you also have yeah. to, you know, establish yourself within your city. True. A lot of people and teams don't donate stuff to their city as much as they should, which would pull in more fans. Right, you right. Know? And, uh, and not to mention, I feel that if ticket sales were, were, were lower and then, say, vending sales were a bit lower, but especially ticket sales, you know, people would spend more money at the park. I was about to say off, that. Yep. They, you know, just because... They'd spend more on merchandise. Yeah, you'd your house more. more, which would in the end possibly make you more money, you know, but you're going to spend more money, which means you can charge vendors more money to have their spots. Yep. You know, and you make yep. money that way. And there and, it is. And that, that really makes it feel like it's more for the fan than it is just making money, even though 
yep. you're making money. Yep. You know. And game six is over. That's the right. Cubbies won it going to game seven That's tomorrow right. night. Man. We did it. We did it. Congratulations, dude. Oh, my. I mean, three to three to one. You know, yep. we're down three to one. Amazing. This is unbelievable. I mean, Amazing. the Cavaliers just did it, but right. that's that's basketball. Yeah, and this is the Cubs. Yeah, and this is the Cubs. This is, in all reality, the longest of history of losing. And You're on your way to breaking yeah. that stupid goat curse, dude. I hope somebody sacrifices the goat after the game. No, not really. Yeah, it wants you to uh, hit the ball you down here. Let's, let's go ahead and wrap it up here. We've been going for a little bit. Been a good 40-minute uh, show. Good yeah. conversation, man. Yeah, it was. It was. That's yep. uh I mean, we're sitting here watching watching history big time. Oh yeah. A hundred years plus of history is waiting to unfold. Mm-hmm. And we've seen a lot of it. Red Sox and all yeah. kinds of good stuff here. Yeah, the when they won the that was years, awesome you know? when Red Sox broke the curse, dude. Yeah, I'm not even a Sox fan. Me neither. But, but let me tell you, it was awesome. Yes, it was. Yes, it was, and uh, we will see after tomorrow night what happened. Yep, uh, we'll uh, we'll hopefully be hoisting up some some awesomeness tomorrow night. Hell yeah! Good luck, man. Well, thank you. Well, everybody, thank you all very much uh, for listening to the Jcast experience. Uh, that's Drew sitting over there, and that's Wade over there. All right, have a good night, guys. Yep, later. Peace. Peace.